Uh, we're going to heat it up with praise and heat it up with prayer and just rejoice in the Lord and allow God's grace to flow in an amazing way. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. So let's lift up our hearts to heaven. Lord, we are here. You said uh, to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Beautiful is your name. Great is your name. We give you all the praise. We open up the gates of heaven. We open up the gate of our heart and our mouth to give you praise and we agree for your grace to flow your healing to come your love to be shown your salvation to come your deliverance to be our portion that this is the house of God and as we gather we agree for your presence to be here powerfully in every form in every fashion and so we want to be the people that are gatekeepers opening up the gate for the king of glory opening up the gate for your beauty and your blessings to flow as we gather Gather in your name. Father, we pray over the United States of America. We lift up our nation right now. We know so many things are happening right now and so many things are uh, in a bit of turmoil and we're asking for grace and peace. We're asking for your purposes to unfold. We're asking for your hand to be upon our land. We lift up President Trump and his wife Melania and his family, God. We lift up the administration. We lift up uh, the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court. All the things that right now are uh, kind of feeling like they're in an upheaval, an uproar. Lord, we know that when everything is shaking, we stand firm upon the word of God, the covenant of God, the kingdom is not shaken and we are not either. And so we decree we're the people of God making a way in the wilderness and blessings to flow. We speak right now over the state of Florida, over Governor Ron DeSantis, over Marco Rubio and Rick Scott as our uh, senators in Washington, D.C. We pray over D.C. We pray over over Tallahassee and we ask for grace and wisdom and protection and your healing and your purposes to unfold in this hour Lord we lift up all of our county commissioners locally bless them and their families let them lead us righteously from uh, Lord Walton Okaloosa Bay God this whole surrounding Emerald Coast let it be a, a place of refuge a place of your grace the prophetic to flow out of this strip of land the miracle strip for you oh God Father we lift up Bob Campbell as our mayor in Pendefiniac Springs. Lord, for Russell Hughes as the superintendent of schools, godly men, uh, men that know you. Father, we lift up Mike Atkinson as our sheriff. And Father, we're thankful for him, also a man of faith. And we lift up uh, Thomas and Daryl and all those that represent the fire, the police, all of our first responders, all of our medical workers on the front lines. Grace them, bless them, strengthen them, encourage them, protect them, let them be uh, under the canopy of your care. Father, we lift up all of our uh, campuses, our students, our uh, educators, our children, uh, whether they're uh, studying on uh, campus or at home, Father, however it might be, bless them, strengthen them, let them learn of you, and let them know your truth, and let them rise up as a generation that will give you all the praise. We bless our business community, and we speak prosperity now, that we might be blessed to be a blessing for you, even in the midst of pandemic and anything else, God, that you and your kingdom economy would be that which leads. And so, uh, Father, we lift up our apple apostolic network those around the world that are connected with us in covenant that are believing for the apostolic the prophetic to flow we bless bishop and all the team that minister to the ministers and we grace all those uh, in their place and region and while the other we bless the nations of the earth we are a joyful house of prayer for all the nations of the earth you ask for that God and so we pray and intercede from uh, Australia New Zealand to Africa into Europe into Asia into Ukraine and Russia into Central and South America, the Isles of the Sea, North America, Canada. Father, let your name be made great and let there be an awakening and revival that begins to hit the earth. We lift up Israel today. We speak peace to you, Jerusalem, and we bless Israel and we stand in agreement for the covenant that you have decreed to continue to stand between America and uh, Israel and between the nations of the earth that are called to stand with her. And so we bless her today. We lift up our military men and women on the front lines. Bless them minister to them strengthen their families strengthen their hearts those on the front lines those that come back home from Eglin and Tyndall and Herbert father whatever they're facing Lord let your grace flow let them feel your peace and your strength father in any turmoil they feel God let them rise up and connect to heaven and receive what they need we bless Vision Church Fort Walton Beach for pastors Ned and Lacey bless them this morning cause them to rise up in power let there be an anointing upon all that takes place as a receive of your word in the midst of worship 
oh God. Father, we thank you for Fort Walton receiving the download of heaven that it needs for revival. We lift up uh, Dr. Tim and we lift up Kathy Lovett. And Father, those that have gone through an affliction with COVID-19 right now. Father, we lift up the Dorado family and the Father for mom and dad and the things that uh, Lord need to be touched and blessed and ministered to. We grace, we speak peace and increase. So God, we just pray your blessing upon each one of these. We stand in faith for your wonderful name to be made great through testimonies that we give to you of your goodness. Father, we lift up Carly right now. All those that are pregnant in the house for all that you blessed in family. We are here to celebrate life and celebrate your goodness and start off 2021 with, uh, Lord, a heart of dedication towards you and an agreement for all that you want to bring, all that you want to do. We stand firm upon your word and give you all the praise. Give a shout to the King. Hallelujah. Welcome, Vision Nation. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We glorify your name, oh Jesus. For you are worthy, Lord. He is my faithful Father, calling me out of the dark. And I cannot whisper away.
Redeemer. Let us not forget Christ Redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Begin to shout words of praise to Jesus this morning. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him trust. Give him trust. Give him trust. For his prominence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You reign. You reign, Lord. 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 Over the affairs of man. Hallelujah. Just lift up your hands. 
you know the word redeemer means he paid the price for whatever you have need of the word savior means that he's come to rescue you out of whatever you are facing the word deliverer means that he knows how to break through and break you out of every captivity lift up your hands now to he who is Christ the Redeemer Christ the Savior Christ the Deliverer we receive the anointing of rescuing of that which will bring that redemption to us you paid the price for that which is breaking us out and breaking us through give a shout to the Christ King over everything Jesus Christ Redeemer we remember he has won the war Jesus mighty overcomer our defender has conquered Christ Redeemer we remember he has won the war
the God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Yeah. I believe. such an anointing here already in the house of God. I want to give thanks to the worship team. They came early. They prayed and there was such a release of the presence of God in this house before anybody came and those praying in the prayer room, thank you for opening up the gate of prayer and just opening up the gate of heaven. But here we are right now in the presence of God and you know what? Worship is not just about singing some songs. If it were, we'd just do some song service and get on with the thing. But we're here to encounter God. We're here to allow business to be transacted with heaven. We're here to receive from all that heaven wants to release to us right now. And I believe there's an anointing for the miraculous right now. And I would dare say if I were to go around this room and ask you, every one of you would have something that you are believing for, that you need a miracle in your life, whether it's financial, physical, social, fam family, uh, whatever it might be that you're facing, those online with Vision Nation may also uh, say the same thing but I want us to take a moment as the worship team is leading us in praise I believe there's an atmosphere you know when you praise what happens is you create an atmosphere and it's called an atmosphere of faith and then an atmosphere of faith and glory you know what can happen anything can happen and God can move in miraculous ways and so I know we're kind of socially distant so I'm going to try this if you have a family member or somebody you know you're living with them already so hey you're exposed uh, why don't you just write Right now close ranks with them for a moment if you're here alone just don't feel alone even though maybe we don't uh, do all the hand holding like we normally do but if you find uh, a family member just go and take their hands or you can come to the front if you're alone if you'd like to just come and be in the presence of God at the altar uh, if not just lift up your hands toward heaven but this is what I want us to do I want us to think of something listen if you don't ask you cannot receive think of something you're believing for for your family or for uh, your life or for your future or the things that God's laid on your heart for ministry I don't care what it is that you need a miracle for that coming for that to come into place for that to take place within your life I want you to just come in agreement we as pastors are going to make decrees over you and agree for the miraculous move of the Holy Spirit but I want you to agree with God I want you to agree with one another and agree that God's faith is going to flow amongst us as we have faith in God in fact some of you if you're online look go ahead and write down something you're believing for on the screen and saying I'm believing for this and others will pray with you and agree in faith. Some of you today need to write this down in your phone or write it down with a pen and paper the old fashioned way or whatever way you want to record it and say I'm believing for this. I remember when I and it was in Bible college and it looked like there was no way I would ever be able to get a new car and I gave faithfully for uh, a couple of years and I said every day I put it in my Bible when I was 17 that I received uh, from my dad and I wrote down in that Bible I said I'm believing for a new car. I'm giving 
giving to uh, missions in Mexico. I'm believing God's going to bring back to me. And you know, miraculously, a year and a half later, a car was put in my hands. Well, that's a miracle for me. I needed that provision. Whatever their provision is that you're believing for, whether it's a physical healing, whether it's something in your family, whether it's something in your future that you're going to lay claim to, let's agree for it right now in the presence of the Lord. So take hands with family uh, and agree together. It says we're two or three agree. It says we're husband and wife. Agree. Their prayers will be unhindered. And so right now, let's come in agreement. If you're here alone, uh, you're not alone. You're in the family atmosphere. And so lift up your hands toward heaven. Or if there's somebody you feel comfortable with, you want to agree with, that's great. Uh, let's just agree right now. We've already had COVID-19, so we got the superpower. We don't have to worry too much about that. But uh, for uh, everyone else, we just want to be wise. But let's also be in faith right now. Lift up your hands toward heaven. And the worship team is going to sing. And as they sing, I want you to pray in agreement over whatever you're believing for. And don't think way off in the future. Believe God now. Faith is now. Faith and hope is the evidence of the things that we are laying claim to and bringing into our presence. So, so in the name of Jesus, Father, we agree right now for the miraculous move of the Holy Spirit for testimonies to come of your greatness and of your goodness for things to shift in a great way that your name will be seen as great in all the earth. We give you praise. You are the God of the miraculous and we lose the miraculous. Look those watching on Vision Nation. I decree over this house right now that miracles are happening. That the anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing breakthrough. That in our heart, in our nation, in the places of the earth that need it now. We are agreeing for miracles to happen in our family, in our finances, in our bank account. Our Father, in our hearts, in our bodies, in the things that need your touch, we decree we're being set free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe. I believe in you, God. You're the God of miracles. of the Lord. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Speak it out I of your mouth. In you. Decree it out of your mouth by faith. I believe in you. This is what God will do. You're the God this is of what miracles. I decree now will take place. I lose I my healing. I lose my prosperity. I, I lose the hand of God in my family. I speak I over my son, my you. daughter. I decree over my You're mom, my dad. I decree you. over those in need right now in my community. I decree over my ministry. I believe God that now is going to be a release of the anointing. That I'm going to see what you have decreed come to pass, God, now in my life. In Jesus' name. up your hands if you will because you know what this is not flowing from us it's not flowing just from the air it's flowing from the breath of God it's flowing from heaven itself it's flowing from the heart of God to you you're reaching up to say I surrender you're reaching up to say I receive you're reaching up to say I plug into the power that God wants to loose in me and for me in this season so lift up your head don't be bowed down right now look to your father your Father in heaven says, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. God wants to give you a good and the perfect gift that you need right now. So as we just lift up our hands toward heaven, look up to your Father and just smile and receive by faith and say with joy and expectation and hope right now, I lay claim to my promise. I lay claim to my blessing. Take a deep breath and just begin to receive the anointing that God wants to release. Pastor Dean's just going to play for a moment. 
He may sing the song of the Lord. He may just play whatever it is. I want you to just open up your heart and receive what God wants to download to you right now. Whatever you need is going to be for now, but it's also going to be for tomorrow. You know, I saw a picture of when a vessel is filled with rocks or anything, really. If you pour oil into it, no matter how many cracks and crevices and spaces and places and voids there may be, it fills up every space. It fills up and fills in everything that's lacking, everything that's needed. So for another moment, lift your hands and just let that saturation affect, that penetration effect when oil is poured over things that are rusty when oil is poured into things that are stuck and clogged up it has that capacity to loosen up and begin to cause things to move cause things to fit cause things to flow cause things to come together we just loose the oil of your anointing now god that's filling us up preparing us for the future but also setting us free and filling us up right now by your grace and your goodness i decree nobody's gonna leave this place need in need or lack nobody's gonna leave this place feeling like something is lacking in their life but god you're gonna fill up every space every place by your grace by your goodness by you and your presence we receive that now the miraculous anointing of the holy spirit miraculous anointing of jesus himself the god that does miracles fill me up saturate me let me rise up in jesus name when you're filled up it's easy to set something filled up with oil on fire when you're dry it can be difficult but when you're filled up thank you lord So, Father, we just decree your miracle-working season in this time. We look to you. We lean on you. We receive from you. We decree we know who you are. And because of that, we know who we are in this world and what we have received. And we give you all the praise. Give the Lord just a hand clap of praise. Father, we love you today. We just celebrate your goodness and honor you in this house. I love your voice 
You have led me through the fire In the darkest nights You were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have been in the goodness of God Amen And all my life you have been faithful Come on, tell him And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Yes. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will see of the goodness of God Come on, His goodness is running after us Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful Yes, he has And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I think we should just camp right here for a moment, take communion. If you could find the cup that's on your seat and around about you and just hold that. You can take off the first little wrapper on the top to get to the wafer and the second wrapper is there for the juice. And we want to celebrate the Lord's goodness, his blessings upon our lives, set the stage for 2021 and all that God wants to do. We're a covenant people, and he is a covenant keeping God. In 1 Corinthians 10, in verse 16, it says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The blessings of heaven come to us through covenant and through our time with the Lord Jesus Christ and what he paid the price for. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we hold the bread. We're speaking of the unity of the body of Christ. He said one spirit, one Lord, one baptism, one voice, one people across the nations and around the world separated by time and oceans but not separated in the spirit. Those that are joining us online from around the world, we're one with you and you're one with us. And we come in agreement this morning for grace to flow in an amazing way in America, for grace to flow in an amazing way in Malaysia and China and Taiwan, and Singapore and Korea and Australia and New Zealand and all the ones that join us from UK and uh, Central and South America, North America, Europe, around the world, into Ukraine and Russia. We decree we're the body of Christ. One, 
body. Part of the word of the Lord, the Lord said to me this year is that that declaration is going to mean more this year than ever before. The body of Christ. That we are his executors, representatives in the earth in this hour. Lift up the bread. And Father, we say right now, we are yours. You paid the price for us. You gave your all and we give our all as well. Father, if there's anyone here today that doesn't feel like they're right with you, let them pray a simple prayer and say, I know I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I receive your sacrifice. Father, I commit my life to you. And God, you'll make it right for them. You will save them, rescue them from whatever they're facing in this life. Father, we pray as children of God that you will bless us and bless our future. And we are standing upon your promises. Let's partake together. Let's lift up the cup together. Lord, you said this is the cup of blessing. And Lord, you told us that this was the cup of our new covenant with you. Lord, we're grateful that we don't live in the Old Testament times, Lord, where we had to bring the, the blood of an animal to cover our sin. No, Lord, we live in the new covenant where Jesus once and for all paid the price for sin. Not to cover it, but to completely remove it. To cast it as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, in this covenant, there's healing. There's freedom. There's deliverance. There's wholeness. There's peace. There's joy. There's righteousness. So, Lord, as we partake of the cup today, we partake of all that you are. We partake of that miracle anointing. Father, for whatever it is that we have need of, you are a miracle-working God and a God who keeps covenant generation to generation. Let's partake together. Just thank the Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus. I love you. I commit my life to you. I'm standing on your promises. Your covenant is true. It's real. And it is the basis for my faith and my future. I give you all the praise. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and just worship the Lord. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Vision Church. We're glad to have you here today. You may be seated. Vision Nation, we're glad to have you as well. Uh, as a part of the service from around the world, we welcome you. And uh, we're... Uh, Pastors Tom and Jane, and we welcome you to Vision Church, and we're so glad that God has called you to be a part of this house and to be here this morning, and uh, we grace you in the name of the Lord. Uh, I believe 2021 holds a lot of good things for us, and that God has called us to press through and persevere through a lot of things that we may face, but there's always grace. You know, even when it says sin abounds, there's what? More grace that always abounds, so we're always in a good place with God. And so we're going to trust the Lord in the midst of all that he's decreed that we're going to see freedom and life, revival, awakening, and harvest in a major way. And so we're going to give you an opportunity just to sow into this year of 2021 and just sow in faith, to give of your tithe, to give of your offering. There's a lot of ways to give. You can give electronically by texting to give. Actually, uh, uh, texting Vision Church CI to 77977. Uh, you can also, if you're on Facebook Live right now, you can hit the Shop Now button. That's the best way to do it uh, right now. And so that's really the Donate button, but you have to hit Shop Now uh, on uh, the Facebook Live broadcast. And we'll welcome that as well. And if you're giving uh, in uh, check or cash, if you want an offering envelope, the ushers are here to serve you. Just lift up your hand, wave them down. They're smiling. They're happy to serve you and to bless you in that way. And uh, also just to prepare the way for God's purposes to unfold. I just wanted to say that some of you last week sowed a first fruits offering for the year. Um, those of you that haven't, we just want to invite you just to label that as a first fruits um, on your offering and just, just put it before the Lord that way, separate from your tithe. So uh, that's what we're doing. So uh, bless you in that. Kind of sowing into 2021 and for the future. A lot of you did that in 2020. I believe that's why God sustained you in a major way. Uh, let me read you a couple of scriptures as you're preparing your offering. Luke 6 of verse 38 says this. Give generously and generous gifts will be given back to you. Shaken down to make room for more. Everybody say more. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflowing measure that it will run over the top. 
Everybody say, more than enough. So not just more, but more than you think you need, running over the top. Your measurement of generosity becomes the measurement of your return. And then listen, I love this scripture in Proverbs eleven twenty four 24 in the Passion Translation. It says this, generosity brings prosperity, but withholding from uh, charity brings poverty. Those who live to bless others will have blessings heaped upon them. And the one who pours out his life to pour out blessings will be saturated with favor. Can you lift up your offering right now? And we just decree the oil is going to be upon our giving. The oil is going to be upon our family, our business. The oil is going to be upon our lives. And it is an oil of breakthrough, blessing, and favor that you will saturate us with favor. That's the overflow of your goodness and your grace. And we'll give you all the praise. Also, as uh, we're having you come in this season to the altar to give of your offering, we're going to put some worship music on. Even if you give electronically, it's kind of good to come up and put your phone over it or whatever and just make that decree of blessing that you're sowing by faith. And also, if you do have a business you would like to have faith for in 2021 that you want us to pray for, we do have all these business cards up here, but we'd like to add yours if we don't have it. And we're going to be praying over those even this morning again. And so you can just place that in the offering basket and then we'll get it uh, into this envelope so we can be in prayer over all the things that God wants to bless you in. So everybody stand up of your help back there. Well, uh, those that have a business, lift up your hand right now. Father, we come in agreement for every one of our businesses. Our businesses are your business. Hallelujah. And we know you care about what we have need of and you care about how our kingdom expression can be blessed. And so we pray for every community, every connection, every contract, everything that we need promotion in, what we need to be able to advance, God, the things that you want to bless and bring increase to. We disagree, God, by faith that we are standing as one. Father, even those online, those here today, God, we bless them. We bless you and we speak peace and increase and strength and that overflowing anointing out of your generosity, you shall receive prosperity for the kingdom's sake. And we decree that now in Jesus name. give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We do want to make a couple of quick announcements just to say we're having Wednesday nights again in the house. And so we had an awesome time of prayer last Wednesday. Thank you for all of you that prayed and fasted for three days and just agreed together for setting the stage for 2021 and all that God uh, wants to do. And so we want to stand and stay in faith. We're going to be hearing a lot of different ones sharing the word of the Lord and the things that God has uh, ministered to them and making decrees out of that. And so we just want you to come and be a part of that as you have uh, opportunity. Also, we want to mention a couple of other things. Amen. Uh, Pastor Dean, where are you? Pastor Dean, is he back in here yet? Uh, maybe cooling off. Lisa, I think they might be cooling off, okay? Uh, Pastor Dean is going to actually have a prophetic worship leader live stream launch um, with uh, Pastor Dean and Catherine Mullins. How many love Catherine Mullins? I mean, she's a friend of this house. Um, and that's going to be on uh, Thursday, January the 14th. And you might want to connect with him about that. It's going to be at 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time. And we'll be telling you a little bit more about that as we come into that. Also, uh, where is A.B.? A.B., wave your hand in the back, okay? Okay. Uh, um, as you see, our house is now undecorated from Christmas. Okay, how many have undecorated your own house? How many still have Christmas up? <laughs> All right. Um, A.B. is going to lead the charge to carry the Christmas boxes back upstairs. So could I have a show of hands of some people that could stay another 15, 20 minutes after service that could help A.B. do that? Men and women, acceptable. Come on, guys, let's all jump in and let's help, okay? And A.B., you're going to be right where you are, and people are going to gather with you, and then you'll go and do that. You know, I love Christmas, so I, I could keep it up for the longest time. My dad actually has a big tree in his house. It, I don't think he's ever going to take down, but anyhow, he uh, kind of celebrates year. Figure, hey, you might as well, at his age, enjoy Christmas every day. Is that what it is, Dad? I don't know, but he, he still has that up, uh, but... Uh, you know, I always enjoy just, uh, in, and the first responders here locally said, hey, we want, we hate it when the Christmas lights go down, so just keep them on through January. So I told my wife, hey, we don't have to, we don't have to undecorate yet. So, but anyhow, that's my excuse. Uh, let me also say we do have, I rest my case uh, in 
uh, boutique in the foyer. Where's uh, Sandy? There you are, Greg and Sandy. Why don't you guys stand up for a minute? And let me just encourage you, if you want to find a good gift or find something that will bless somebody, those uh, scriptures put on pillowcases where you sleep on the word, it's just an amazing concept. And so I want to encourage you. Plus, she has a lot of other things back there that you can lay claim to uh, that you can receive that blessing. Also, concerning our upcoming uh, worship, uh, I mean, Watchman Leadership uh, Seminar, that's going to be online just to let you know. We decided this year that it's going to be uh, done uh, online. It's going to be a special time, and, but we're going to have a powerful impact. But it's kind of a new venture for us. So be in prayer for us on how we're going to cause that all to come to pass. Also, we want to dismiss our children. If they haven't gone already, we want to bless them. All head that way with Pastor Dan and the team back there. We appreciate uh, all the Karen and all the rest of them that help us. We appreciate uh, Marilyn and Tanya that have done their part for so many, so many years, but also all the rest that are taking up that place right now, and we grace them. Father, we bless our children. We speak peace and increase in knowledge and love and dedication to you and your protection to be upon them continually. We thank you for our care kids. Let them be arrows that hit the mark in Jesus' name. Well, this morning, Apostle Jane has a continuation of her word that she wanted to share. Give her a big hand as she comes to minister to us. Amen. I think we all ought to just jump to our feet one more time, and we're going to just give the Lord a big victory shout. Before we do that, before we do that, I want you to understand why we shout, okay? A lot of times we do things in church, and if we don't do it with revelation, then we don't receive the full benefits of it. So this is what the scripture says. It says that we are to shout unto God with a voice of... How many here have something to triumph about? Come on. How many have something to celebrate? Amen. If you're a believer, you have something to celebrate. And then it says this. It says, God has gone up with a... Okay, God arises amid shouts of praise. Amen. So when we shout, God stands up. How many believe that... We need to see God stand up today. Amen? He's not just kicked back watching what's happening. God stands up and God's uh, aggressively engaged in what is happening in the earth today. Amen? And so God, God arises amid shouts of praise. And then here's what happens. The Bible says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. How many have some enemies? I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about things in the spirit. How many have some enemies you want to see scattered right here at the beginning of 2021? Come on, we're going to shout. God's going to arise and scatter our enemies. Come on, on the count of three. One, two, three. Shout unto God. Woo! Yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We engage with heaven. We engage with heaven this morning. We engage with your superiority. We engage with your sovereignty. We engage with your victory today, oh God. In Jesus' name, God. Families bre breaking through, Father God. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. And we declare it today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Woo! Now, I know y'all were just shouting to stay warm, weren't you? Come on, you can be seated. Hallelujah. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of continue. If you, some of you were here a couple weeks ago, um, I, I started with something uh, that came out in prayer from Pastor Greg, and we'll get into that in just a minute, but it's, it's really about the, the, the dance of the Mahanaim. Look at, now these are soldiers dancing. Okay, it's tough. How many here are tough? Okay, how many know that you got to be tough in this season of time? This is not a season for being wimpy. This is not a season for being uh, uh, kicked back and passive. This is a season to be engaged. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, I was laughing this week on the internet, just thinking back on 2020. And, you know, the people are doing a lot of really funny memes about 2020 and all that it brought us. It was an unprecedented year. How many would agree it was an unprecedented year? But we actually have found that locally here as a body, it really ended up being a year of breakthrough for so many. Amen. Amen. We saw so many people really advance into their new season in this year. But I saw this one meme that just made me laugh, and it said, 
I never thought that I would see the phrase, I wouldn't touch him with a six foot pole, turned into national policy, okay? <laughs> we are in a crazy time. I was just in California over the weekend, and let me just say, the California church is alive and well. They are engaged. I'm telling you, sometimes when the devil makes decrees against you, it, it was like they said when the, when the, the governor said, you can gather but you can't sing. They said, enough is enough. And they threw their doors wide open. Let me tell you, the church I was in was packed. Packed. Come on, the church is alive and well. They were fully engaged. This is a season that we've got to be fully engaged. But you know, last year, at the beginning of last year, we talked about 2020 being the end of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. The number 20 in scripture is actually linked to ending one season and coming into another season. In Judges chapter 4, in the days of Deborah, Israel had been under harsh oppression for 20 years, but then Deborah arose. She released a prophetic word that brought their oppression and their bondage to an end. It mobilized an army, and literally all they had to do was show up, and then God fought their battles for them. Amen? How many know God's looking for some people that are going to show up for the battle in this season of time. This is not a time to lay back. This is not a time to be passive, but it's a time to show up. And God delivered them from 20 years of bondage and brought them into a double portion season. 40 years of blessing. How many are expecting double for your trouble? Come on, a shalam year. We talked about shalam. Shalam means to restore more than before and to restore better than before. Then a lot of my, my journey last year was studying the, the life of Jacob. And again, that talks about how um, Isaac and Rebekah were Jacob's, uh, Jacob and Esau's parents. And Rebekah was actually barren for 20 years. You know what barrenness is? Barrenness is when you can't reproduce. It's when nothing bears fruit. It's when there's no fulfillment of promise and the dream. And it speaks of a cycle of disappointment after disappointment. But, the, but, but as the, the year 20 rolled around in Rebecca's life, after 20 years of barrenness, God said, enough is enough. God opened up her womb, and he didn't just give her a baby. He gave her two. Come on, everybody say double. So God broke the, the, the curse of barrenness. And then we know the whole story of Jacob. I won't go back into it except to say that we know that Jacob's name meant heel grabber, supplanter, deceiver, conniver, a little bit of a manipulator. How many know that he kind of manipulated the firstborn blessing out of Esau, his brother? But Esau didn't really care about the blessing. Jacob loved the covenant blessing. Jacob loved and went after the blessing that was on Abraham and on his father Isaac. And above all else, he loved that covenant and he loved that blessing. He just went about it the wrong way. Okay? And as a result, kind of a, he ended up having to leave his land of covenant and run off and serve Laban for 20 years. And here's what God did. God took Jacob the manipulator, the cheater, and put him under a bigger cheater, Laban. Come on. Jacob thought he was good at cheating. Laban was better. Laban cheated Jacob. Remember, he worked seven years for Rachel, his, lo his love, the one that he loved so much. And then all I can think is that he had too much to drink at his wedding because he went in to, instead to Leah, didn't even know that was her until the next morning. So I'm thinking, yeah, you got to got to have it's got to be awfully dark. Or you've had to have a lot to drink. I don't know. <laughs> but then he ended up having to serve 7 more years for for Rachel, and then he served six more years, and it says that Laban actually changed his wages ten different times, made him promises, and then broke his promise. He was, he was cheated constantly. It was like God put him under a cheater to work the cheater out of him. Sometimes God will put you under somebody to work something out of you. How I feel like there's been a process God's had you in. Where he's been dealing with your heart and your life. But after 20 years, Jacob was reawakened to the fact that there was a covenant land that belonged to him. 
I believe 2020 is a year was a year of awakening to covenant blessings and covenant promises and that God is saying I want you to lay hold of the covenant that you have in Jesus Christ I want you to lay hold of the covenant that you have in this land of America I want you to lay hold of the covenant that you have even with one another and that's actually why we started taking communion together this is actually our 10th month of taking communion together because God is a covenant keeping God and let me tell you no matter what's rocking and rolling and the earth today our God is a God of covenant and our God always 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 fulfills his promise 20 years breaking out of the old breaking in to the new how many feel like you broke into some new things I let me y'all want to know something our church grew in 2020 you might look around and say, no, we're smaller because we're not gathering as many. But let me just say, our reach every single day is reaching nations every single day. And many of these people even around the world now count Vision Church their home church. Is that amazing to you? We grew. We were blessed. God extended and expanded us in crazy increase because of the faithfulness of God. How many understand sometimes God says something and you have no idea how it's going to happen? <laughs> What's that? Super bloom. Exactly. How many have been decreeing super bloom over your life? All right. Remember, super blooms only happen when your soil gets agitated. <laughs> God says super bloom and we all celebrate. And God goes, yep, I'm getting ready to agitate your soil. <laughs> yeah, my husband says, don't point at anybody when you say agitation, okay? <laughs> so I want to read you the definition of reset. Because reset is a reformation word. We said breaking old cycles. A lot of the prophets said reset. So this is what reset means. It means to put something back into proper position. Desired order or condition for use. Think of this God resetting you. God resetting his church. And God resetting a nation. It means to post, station, or appoint for the purpose of performing some duty. To settle something resolutely. To establish something so others can follow. Come on, isn't that what we're desiring? to do to establish the word of the Lord to establish the kingdom of God to establish what God is decreeing over the land it means to adjust so as to control the performance of something to cause to take a particular direction to tighten things up to place or plant firmly we talked a lot about believe the Lord and you will be established you didn't realize that established meant you will be reset Come on. Believe the Lord and you'll be established. You'll be reset. Then you can believe the prophets and you'll prosper. That word prosper doesn't just mean get rich. It literally means you will advance. You will move forward. You will break out. You will break through. You will become a success. You will become profitable and you will become prosperous. Come on, but the first thing is we got to get reset and established to place or plant firmly to put something broken back in position and so on December the 13th in our prayer time um, in the morning on Sunday morning Pastor Greg released this word and for those of you that don't know who Pastor Greg is Pastor Greg would you just stand up and just wave at everybody let them see your handsome face amen and I want I, and I want if you don't mind let's stand up because I want to release this word over us and it's a very interactive word from the Lord and uh we wrote down what he said that morning. But just, just lift your hands up to the Lord as we declare this. I know when you lift your hands, they get colder, but then you can sit down and put them back under you, okay? All right, so let, let's just hear what the Lord says. He said, I hear a trumpet in the heavens. No, I hear trumpets, many trumpets, because the Lord our King is about to make a decree. First tell my bride, the church, barrenness is broken. Barrenness is broken. In other words, that which hasn't produced in the past season is going to produce in this new season. And God is going to bring you into fulfillment. And as 
as he's breaking barrenness, he is decreeing that he is placing his left hand under her head and with her and with his right hand, he is stirring up that which is in her. Speaking of the church, her spirit life. The Lord declares, my people lay hands on your chest and begin to thank me for the Holy Spirit, the helper that lives in you. Let's do that right now. Father, we thank you, God, Lord, that the Holy Spirit, the, the empowerer, the comforter, the paraclete, the one that walks alongside of us, God, the helper, the, 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 the miracle worker lives in us. God, we're thankful for your Holy Spirit dwelling in us in a brand new and powerful way. He says, for I would have you declare what I'm saying to my church, my bride. And then he said this, it's time to dance the dance of the Maha Naim. Prophet Greg then stopped and said, I'm not really sure what that means, but God is declaring it's time to dance the dance of the Maha Naim. Put your hand in mine and your arm around me as I embrace you and follow my lead. You do not know this dance, says the Lord. Let me lead and I will cause an activation in you that which has been held until this time. It will cause an appearance to come through you, a supernatural manifestation of who I am, that all those in the world and darkness will see and be drawn to. I'm stirring my gifts to be released in my church bride for this day. Receive it, embrace it, pass it on. I want you to put your hand on your belly. And I want us just as a congregation to begin to pray in the spirit right now. Come on, just stir up. Activate the gifts of God. Activate the supernatural. Activate the, uh, the Holy Spirit empowerment. Father, we decree right now, God, that this is a year, Father God, that we are going to have to be very close to you. God, we're going to have to dance cheek to cheek with you, Lord God, to know how to move in this new season. Father, we thank you, God, that you are stirring up your Holy Spirit so that we can be a light in the darkness and in this time in history as never before. Activate us, empower us, Father God, in Jesus' name. And I want you just to release one more shout to the Lord, a shout of activation. Hallelujah! Yes! Now, Father, I decree every spirit of barrenness is broken off the people of God. I decree right now, Father God, that the spirit of barrenness is broken off your church. It's broken off of this church. It's bro broken off, Father God, each and individual uh, family, Father God. And we decree a season of breakthrough as we learn to dance the dance of the Maha Naim. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. You can be seated. So I'm going to try to unpack this just a little bit um, about what the dance of the Mahanaim actually is, how we're going to do this. Now, the first thing I want to, I want to say, let's, let's actually go and read the scripture where we see this. Because as soon as Pastor Greg said, we're going to dance the dance of the Mahanaim, I knew exactly where to go in scripture because I'd been studying it earlier in the year. This is the story of Jacob when he's just come out of Laban's land. He's just now crossing in. If you want to go to that next slide, Simon. He's just now crossing in to, um, to the, the promised land. And what happens? But he encounters a company of angels. Look at it. It says, so Jacob went his way and the angels of God met him. Say, they met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. And he named, called the name of the place Mahanaim. Mahanaim in Hebrew means two camps, two companies, two armies. He named it Mahanaim because he was acknowledging, I have a camp with my wives, my children, my flocks, all my possessions, but I see that there is a second camp that is a supernatural camp, a camp of, uh, of angel armies, a camp of heavenly uh, um, ambassadors that are sent down here to help me accomplish covenant and to help me contend for this land. Come on, guys, we are not alone. Whatever battle you're facing, you are not alone. God is saying this year, it's going to be marked by the fact that whatever you're endeavoring
going to do in the natural, God is saying there is a supernatural army. There is a supernatural angelic host, angelic force that God is sending down in this season to cooperate with us, to work with us so that his kingdom can come. His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many believe that? How many believe that God is sending angels even down into America? Come on, we're going to talk about this week in just a few minutes, all right? So we're going to look at what is the dance of the Mahanaim, okay? Because we've got to understand how to connect this year more than ever before. Number one, it's a dance of covenant. It's the dance of the Shulamite. We'll see that in the scripture in just a minute. It's a dance of intimacy and relationship with God. It's interesting, as I've studied the number 21 in Scripture, I actually found that the number 21 is tied in in Scripture with covenant and contending. Covenant and contending. You think we've been taking communion for 10 months just to have a snack? It's pretty sad if that's what you're doing, okay? Okay. <laughs> We're taking communion because we want to anchor ourselves in our covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. We actually see in Genesis chapter 21, the very first chapter in Scripture, we see that um, back in, in previous chapters, God had spoken to Abram and Sarah and told them they were going to have a child in their old age. In Genesis chapter 21, Abraham is 100 years old, but more miraculously, Sarah is 90. Okay? This is not a blessing that I'm praying for, okay? Just by the way, Lord, okay? But they had a baby in their old age according to the fulfillment of the prophetic word that God had given them 25 years before. God is a covenant-keeping God. How many think that maybe they thought God had left the building? How many think that maybe God's word failed? How many think that maybe they thought that God had forgotten his promises? But in Genesis 21, they, God fulfilled his word to them and gave them the long-awaited promise. Let me tell you, some of you may have been waiting for the promise of God for a long time, but I'm telling you, God is never late. God is never passive. God always has a plan and a purpose and a mind in, in, in his purpose. And what we've got to do is we've got to stay in alignment and stay in engagement with what God has spoken. God fulfilled his covenant. And we see in Genesis chapter 21 that he makes a covenant with Abimelech and then he plants a tamarisk tree to honor the everlasting God, El Olam. This is the foundation of where the appeal to heaven message began. If you don't know what that is, I want to encourage you, Google it, listen to Dutch Sheets preach on it, the appeal to heaven. It actually starts right here in Genesis 21. El Olam, the God that keeps covenant generation to generation. All about covenant. And this is a year that's going to be all about covenant. Jacob was returning to the land. Now, here's the thing. He was returning to the land with his wives and, and his children and, and all that he owned. But he was getting ready to meet Esau. Remember the guy he stole from all those years ago? Cheated him out of his father's blessing. Cheated him out of his birthright. All that went on. He's getting ready to meet Esau. Do you think maybe he's a little nervous? Come on. Jacob is not a warrior. Jacob is a businessman. Jacob's a rancher. He's a father. He's a husband. Okay, but he's returning to meet Esau, who was a warrior. Esau was a good old boy. Tough. Jacob was a mama's boy. Come on. But he returned, and what he needed at that moment was he needed an army. And God sent him an army. See, God's a God that keeps covenant. God said, this is the covenant land. I'm going to give it to you and your children. Esau didn't want it. Esau didn't want the covenant. Esau didn't want the spiritual responsibility. He gave it away. Jacob wanted it with all his heart. And he returned, and the angels were there watching over the covenant land. I'm telling you, we're in a season that there's going to be more and more angelic interaction because it was from that place at Mahanaim in that very same chapter, Genesis 32, that Jacob went on a little bit further. And remember, he wrestled with God. 
It says that he met a man. We know it was God. We'd say sometimes he wrestled with an angel, but it was actually God. And listen to Jacob's heart. He wrestled all night long. And morning was getting ready to break. And he said to the Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. Come on, I will not let you go. How easily we give up. How easily we give up on whatever God has said. Well, I guess it just didn't happen. How easily we give up. Come on, how, how many of you have had to contend for the promises of God? How many of you have had to press into the things that God has said over your life? Come on, Jacob didn't give up. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Why? Because he understood God was a God of covenant. God was a God of blessing. Everything about Jacob's life was to grab hold of the blessing. And God asked him at that point, he said, what's your name? Don't you think that's interesting? And in the Amplified, it's very interesting. It says, and Jacob was shocked to say to God, my name is Jacob. He was shocked. He was standing before the living God saying, my name's Cheater. My name's Manipulator. My, my name's Deceiver. My name's Supplanter. <laughs> I think it's very interesting that when God identifies himself, he identifies himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He doesn't say Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, which is the new name that God gave him at that point. God said, no more is your name going to be Jacob, but your name is going to be Israel because you've contended with man and you've contended with God and prevailed. Come on, this resulted in this place of shift in Jacob's life. It was a personal place of shift in Jacob's life. He had to shift into the covenant. He had to shift into a new identity. Some of us have got to shift into a new identity. We've got to realize who we are. We're not the same people that we were in January of 2020. We're a new people. Come on, God's worked some things in us. God's worked some things out of us. But we've got to understand and take stock in, and recognize, God, who am I in this new season? You've contended with men. And you've contended with God and you've prevailed. There's a lot of wrestling that's been going on. But we've got to anchor ourselves in covenant. We've got to... God wants to, to anchor us in our covenant that we have with Jesus Christ. Now, I want to show you this scripture out of Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 13, that says, Come back, come back, O Shulamite. Come back, come back, that we may gaze on you. Why would you gaze on the Shulamite as on the dance of the Mahanaim? The dance of the Mahanaim. So, so who was the Shulamite? The Shulamite was the woman that Solomon loved. Now Solomon had a gazillion wives and a gazillion concubines. I wouldn't recommend trying this. But this one woman was his queen. This one woman was his heart. And the word Shulamite is actually from the exact same word that the name Solomon comes from. It's the word Shalom, which is again rooted in Shalam. It means perfect peace. It means perfect one, peaceful one. And I believe that the Shulamite is a picture of the bride of Christ doing a dance with her bridegroom, Jesus Christ. And we can go on and we can talk about possessing the land. We can talk about a lot of things. But let me say, if you don't have this part down, if you don't have the fact that God is asking us to dance, a dance with him, a dance of covenant, a dance of intimacy, Okay, let me just help some of you, okay? It's not a dance that's like this. It's not one of those dances. It's a dance like this. Where we hold the Lord, and the Lord holds us. Okay? We've got to understand that the only way that we follow his lead is by being very close to him. Close in that, my husband's doing the chicken dance down on the front row. <laughs> But a, a very, very close place. I want to read your scripture. It's not, on the, it's not on the overhead. But this is Isaiah 54, 10 that says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills shall be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. 
So the first thing we've got to learn to do is we've got to learn to dance the dance of intimacy. What is intimacy? Intimacy means that we come before the Lord with everything that we are, the good, the bad, the ugly. Years ago, I saw somebody do this. Everybody put your hands up in front of your face like this. See, we've got to learn how to walk in intimacy with the Lord, but we've also got to learn to walk in intimacy with one another. This is not going to be a day that we can survive alone. All the isolation, all the separation, we can, we've got to be plugged in. We've got to have one another. And this is how we walk around, now more so than ever. We walk around with a mask, a mask that's not fabric or paper. We walk around with a mask of our making. Only let people see what we want them to see. But here's what the word intimacy means. It means into me see. Turn and look at somebody and say, into me see. This is what God is asking for us. He's asking for that kind of close covenant connection that actually brings us into a place of being able to dance with him. Now, how are we going to do this? How are we going to come into this place of being able to dance with the Lord? If you'll go to the next slide, Simon. Number one, we've got to learn how to reset. You want to reset? Number one, we've got to reset our lives in Christ-centered living. Matter of fact, if you're taking notes, write down that phrase, Christ-centered living. Lots of craziness going on. God is saying, center yourself in Christ-centered living. We've got to renew our first love with him. We've got to reset for revival by allowing revival to start in us. Come on, revival isn't out there somewhere. Revival's right here. We've got to get revived in our spirit, revived in our personal relationship. And I've often said this, is that if there was ever a time in your life where you loved Jesus more, where you loved reading the word more, where you loved being in his presence more, if there was ever a time in your life that you are closer to God than you are right now, then you need revival. Come on. Say, Lord, let it begin with me. We've got to understand that. We've got to keep our eyes on the Lord through whatever we're going through. We've got to walk in covenant with God. We've got to walk in covenant for our land. And we've got to walk in covenant with one another. Now, I'm going to be mama here for just a second, okay? Because we're in a pretty contentious season. Or have you noticed? We've been praying for our nation based on the prophetic word that has declared, America shall be saved. We've been warring with prophecies. We've been believing a lot of things that God has spoken to us. And it seems like this last week, so many things happened. Chaos broke out. We don't support what happened in the Capitol building. But let me just say this. Let me just say this. Right now, of course, Maha Naim means two camps. But here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to divide the body. And there's a spirit of division that's coming, not just in our nation. There's a major spirit of division in our nation. But there's also a major spirit of division in the church. And so I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask you not to break covenant because you have differences of opinion. Don't break covenant with your family members because they believe something differently spiritually or something different politically than where we are today. Don't break covenant. This is a covenant-making season, not a covenant-breaking season. And let me just say this. I don't believe most of what I hear on mainstream media. But neither do I believe everything I hear in the alternative news. And we've got people siding up on two different sides right now, trying to determine what's best for our nation. And I'm telling you, God made a declaration, America shall be saved. And so whatever, however you're positioning yourself in this battle, I'm going to encourage us, we've got to stay in the fight. You say, well, I thought the fight was over. Oh, no. But listen. We judge each other. We get into judging each other. We get offended by things that people are posting. We get offended by things that, that we, our brothers and sisters are doing. And what we've got to do is we've got to be anchored in covenant.
got something to say? Oh, he's got, okay. <laughs> Come on, we got we to gotta believe that. See, the enemy wants to destroy our families. He wants to destroy our churches. And what we got to do, we got to be anchored in him. You say, so why are we fighting? Why are we still contending? Isn't it all settled? Well, could you play that clip, Simon? We're going to listen to Chuck Pierce. This, let me just say this before he hits the, the button. Chuck actually released this word. And of course, listen, we walk in covenant with people like Chuck Pierce and Dutch Sheets and Cindy Jacobs and Lance Walno, okay? And really, if you get in there and you talk to each and every one of them, some of them have different, different views on what we're doing. I encourage you still stay plugged in to give him 15 with Dutch Sheets. It'll help you to know how to pray, help you to know how to position. But this is why we're still fighting, okay? So Dutch, uh, Chuck originally released this in October of 2018. He reiterated it in 2020 uh, in October at a meeting we were at. And this is actually November the 1st. Chuck was in a meeting and he reiterated this word again. He said, you're going to have to stay in this next battle this, the, the following election in 2020, you're going to have to stay in the battle until January 18th. When a prophet says that in 2018, about 2021, we need to understand God knew that this nation was going to be in the mess that we're in. Now, when Chuck says this, and he, you're going to hear in just a minute, when Chuck says this, he doesn't actually tell you how it's all going to turn out. <laughs> he doesn't tell you the end result, but he does say, God says, stay in the battle. So let's listen to our friend Chuck, Prophet Chuck the Pierce. The Lord again spoke to me and said, this will not be fully settled until January the 18th. We, it will be swampy. It will be nasty. And we must stand praying until then. So, I have said what God has said to me. I have not held back. I hope you, some way in the middle of the fertilizing, have not had too much slung on you. But if you did, that was necessary. Because this year has been a very difficult year of being dug around and fertilized. But let's decree right now, we're on the verge of growing in a new way. The Lord again spoke okay, to me. That, so can we hear the word of the Lord? There's something yet that God is doing. I know that politically a lot of things seem like they're settled in the natural. I just want to say really nothing settled. And I'm not just talking about who's going to be president. I'm talking about the destiny of our nation. He does not spell out what it's going to look like at the end. But he is saying you need to stay engaged. So we're going to charge you and we're going to challenge you. Stay engaged. Listen, if you don't know how to pray, pray in the, pray in the Spirit. Tim Sheets said a couple months ago, he said that he was in a time of praying and he was trying to pray for the nation, knowing that we were going to go through all this stuff. We all knew that we were going to go through this stuff, right? And he said, Lord, I don't even know how to pray. And he said, he heard the Holy Spirit say, then why don't you let me do it? Come on, this is a time that we've got to engage. If you want to go on our Vision Church page every morning, 830 to 930, they pray in the Spirit. Okay, this is a time to pray in the spirit. And this is a time not to let differences of opinion to divide you from your brothers and sisters. People are building camps. People are getting angry at each other. Can we maintain a place of a covenant of peace even in the midst of chaos? Amen. This is a season of contending. The dance of the Mahanaim is a contending season. When it says that the angels of God met Jacob, that word met is the Hebrew word pagah, which is the word for intercession. 
the angels of God came and they were interceding for Jacob. They were interceding for Jacob to fulfill his destiny. They were interceding over the land to fulfill its destiny. And they were interceding against the works of darkness. The word intercede literally means to get in the way. How many understand God sending angels down to get in the way of the enemy's plans? But they were an angel army. They weren't angels on vacation here on earth. They were an angel army sent to intercede. I believe that we've got intercession. If you go to that next slide, Simon. Because we're in a season of contending. Go to the next slide, thank you. Um, because listen, the number 21 is marked with, content, with this, the understanding of contending. Daniel contended 21 days. That fueled his prayers fueled the war that was going on in the heavens. There is a war going on in the heavens right now. And our prayers are fueling the angel armies. You think, well, God just decrees that the angels go to do it. Right. But at the same time, the angels are fueled by our prayers. We see that clearly in Daniel when it says, we came because of your words. And the whole time you've been praying, we've been fighting so that we could get here. That's one of the clearest pictures of spiritual warfare. The number 21 is seen time and time again in Scripture as being a, a, a number, a chapter that is talking about contending. In Numbers 21, we see uh, Israel contends with the kings of Og and Sihon and and battles them and has victory. We see in 2 Samuel 21, uh, David goes in and wipes out all of the Philistine of Gath, all of Goliath's brothers and relatives in Gath. And it goes in and says he subdued all the giants in the city of Gath. It was a season of contending, but also a season of victory. 1 Kings 21, Jezebel killed the righteous man Naboth. And the prophet Elijah rose up and said, enough is enough. Come on, I hear this in the spirit right now. God's saying, enough is enough. Come on, enough is enough. God's going to start dealing with foolishness. God's going to start dealing with how people have fraternized with the enemy's plans. Enough is enough. He's going to deal judgment on Jezebel. He's going to deal judgment on the spirit of witchcraft. Come on, God is declaring enough is enough. Just say it with me. Enough is enough. We've got to realize we're contending for our families, for our children, for our children's children, for generations. Matthew 21. Jesus, I have to remember what that was. <laughs> Jesus, oh, this is when Jesus comes in with a whip and cleanses the temple. How many know judgment begins at the house of God? And then, of course, in Luke chapter 21, Jesus talks all about contending in the last days. And so what we've got to understand, this is a season to be on our toes. This is not a season to lay back and to say, well, whatever will be, will be. Pastor Tom talked about fatalism, fear, fatigue, and fatalism. Fatalism says, well, whatever will be, will be. That is, that is, not, that is not a Bible verse. <laughs> that is not a Bible verse. Thank God it's not. Listen. You say, well, God's will be done. No, no, no. This is what the Bible says. It says if you see somebody that's sick, you go lay hands on him and heal them. Do you realize that you could say, well, if it be thy will, Father. No, no, no. God says it is my will. I just need somebody to go do my will. We got to shift out of that old religious mentality that says God's already got it all predestined, all planned out, who lives, who dies, who gets healed, who doesn't get healed, what happens here, what happens there. No, God said, I have raised up an ecclesia. You are my people in the earth. I've invested you with power. I've invested you with authority. And so if you don't like something and there's something going on that's corrupt in your community, go change it. Come on, when poverty had this territory all locked up, we fasted, we prayed, we contended, 
We were number 64 out of 67 counties in the state of Florida on the ranking of poverty. We were number 64. We were one of the poorest counties in all of Florida. And we walked and we prayed and we did prophetic acts and we took communion on the land and we broke the curses and we listened to the Father and God gave us insight in the year 2000 and we contended in the spirit. We said poverty is not going to rule the day. Witchcraft is not going to rule the day. And we did spiritual battle. And I want you to know that from the time we began that battle in the year 2000 to the very beginning of 2002, in 18 months, we went from being number 64 in the state of Florida on the poverty list to be being listed as the number one real estate market, the fastest growing prosperity in the entire continental United States. Don't tell me it's not about what we do. We've got to understand our dance is to do the will of the Father. And our God is a mighty man of war. And we got to dance with him, guys. We have a, a friend, Linda Ho, and when her son was, was young, was little, everywhere they went, he saw angels just like he was looking at you and I. His name's Koa. And they would travel in different churches, and she said, Koa, what are the angels doing? when they'd go into a church. And as the people were warring and contending, he'd go, Mom, it's really cool. They're like spinning their swords and they're zipping out of here like they've been given an assignment to go. Or when the people were dancing, she'd say, Koa, what are the angels doing? He's like, man, the angels are dancing all over this place, Mom. One time they went into this one church that was kind of a dead church. Sorry to say that, but there are dead churches. Have no spirit, no life. And she said, Koa, what are the angels doing? Koa was probably about seven years old. He looks around. He goes. Oh, mom, they're out in the foyer. They're just kind of standing around talking. If God sends us angels, come on, guys. Let's believe that they're not going to be hanging out in the foyer drinking coffee. How many know we got to engage in the Spirit? And when we engage, the angels heed the voice of God. The angels hear the sound of His Word. When we're prophesying up here, it's not just so that your ears get tickled and you get a good little word to go home with. No, when we prophesy, we're releasing the voice of God that begins to break things open. It's literally a force that begins to change things in our lives. And angels respond to the Word of the Lord. Some of you need to go home and prophesy over your own homes. Prophesy over your kids. Prophesy over your, over your bank accounts. We got to contend. But we're not fighting flesh and blood. Let's look at this. Ephesians 6. Oh, I'm going long today. Y'all give me grace. Kids aren't back yet. Okay. Ephesians 6, verse 10. The Passion Translation. Now, my beloved ones, I've saved these most important truths for last. Be, raise your hand because you're going to want this. Be supernaturally infused with strength through your life union with the Lord Jesus. There's covenant again. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power flowing in and through you. Put on God's complete set of armor provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accuser. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. For they are a, I think we're, let's skip to the next slide. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Are you guys getting this? Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer, for you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Come on, decree, I will rise victorious. Decree, we will rise victorious. Come on, this dance of the Maha Naim is a dance of contending. There's an army here on earth and there's an army in heaven and God is saying you need one another to accomplish God's kingdom purposes in the, in the land. Now, when we ask God, what are we contending about? Last August, the Lord said, you're contending against chaos. The Lord said this to me in, in our time of prayer. He said, the God of peace is rising. 
If you look at our nation right now, you think anything but that. But see, we've got to look in the eyes of the Spirit, and we've got to understand what that actually means. The God of peace is rising. The God of peace is rising. Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. The God of peace. Isaiah 6, 9, 6 declares that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The word prince means one who wrestles, one who wars, one who governs, one who rules. He is the prince, the ruling prince, the contending prince, the fighting prince. And we talked last year about the fact that that Hebrew word shalom actually means this. Peace comes when you destroy the authority of chaos. What are we doing? We're fighting a spiritual battle. But in the earth, it manifests as chaos. Some of you have been confused. Lay your hands on your head. Father, I break confusion off. Lord, I lose strong, keen spiritual discernment. God, give us eyes to see. God, give us ears to hear the right voices. Lord, let us discern things properly so that we know how to position ourselves in this season of battle because the battle for this nation is not over. It's not just about a presidency, God. It's about the battle for the destiny, the soul of this nation. And God, your declaration has been a miracle. America shall be saved. So, Father, let us see how chaos is working and let the church rise up to overthrow the authority of chaos in our personal lives, in our families, in our finances, in our businesses, in our churches, and in our nation. God, give us your shalom authority over every spirit of chaos. In Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 51. I'm going to read this because... You're going to see in this decade, you're going to see rising tensions with China. I don't have time to go into all of this, but let me just say, the virus came from China, but that's not the last time we're going to deal with China. There's a lot of stuff with China right now. Prophetically, prophets are picking it up. Naturally, we know that there's trouble uh, uh, in, in the natural realm as well. But it's not about a nation. It's about a spirit. It's about a spirit. And I want you to understand, listen, listen to this in Isaiah 51. It's kind of a cool scripture. It says, wake up, wake up, flex your muscles, God. Wake up, as in the old days and the long ago. Didn't you once make mincemeat out of Rahab and dispatch the old chaos dragon? Rahab's name means chaos and destruction. The enemy has sent chaos and destruction against us, and we're saying, God, rise up. Wake up. Wake up, God. Flex your muscles. Flex your muscles, God. Flex your muscles. And he says, didn't you once dry up the sea, the powerful waters of the deep, and then make the bottom of the ocean a road for the redeemed to walk across? In the same way, God's ransomed will come back. Come on, this is going to be a comeback dance. The Mahanaim is a comeback dance. It's a dance of victory. You will come back, come back to Zion, cheering, shouting, joy eternal, wreathing their heads, exuberant ecstasies, transporting them, and not a sign of moans or groans anywhere. I want us to stand up. Come on. The third thing about the dance of the Mahanaim, it's a comeback. It's a comeback dance, a victory dance. If you'll go to that next slide, Simon, let me give you the definition of comeback. You can lift your hands and you can receive this. You, those of you that have been around know the Lord spoke this word to me years ago about the comeback. He said, your setbacks are only a setup for a mighty comeback. It literally means a regaining of success, fame, health, prosperity, etc. Say etc. <laughs> it means recovery. It means revival. It means resurgence, to return to a former good position or condition after a loss, the act of making up for a deficit. Now, let me just say this. You can go to that final slide. You can put your hands down. Pastor Greg, if you'll come up here. The comeback is God's victory. Please don't try to define what it's going to look like. Just stay in the battle. Stay in the battle. Let me say it's probably going to get messier before it gets better. Batten down the hatches. But stay strong in your spirit. Pray in the spirit all day long. Is there another sc screen? Oh, I didn't give him another screen. Let me say this about Mahanaim and why it's a victory dance. 
The Hebrew scholars actually translate it that way when it says the, the, about the Shulamite that she dances the dance of the Maha Naim. They translate it. They dance the dance of victory. Come on, if God would prophetically speak and say, it's time to learn to dance the dance of the Maha Naim, when we didn't even know what that meant, understand God's up to something. In Scripture, we see that Maha Naim actually became a place where God dealt with illegitimate and corrupt things. We see that when Saul was dead, Ishbosheth, one of his sons, Ishbosheth, actually went and set up his kingdom. David was the next king, right? David was anointed to be the next king. But he ruled the house of Saul from Mahanaim, and David ruled from Hebron for seven years. When Ishbosheth was killed by his own people, David took over as the king over the entire nation. Again, when Absalom rose up against David and David left Jerusalem, you know where he went? He went to Maha Naim. He went to the place where there was an angel army. He went to a place where the God of covenant sent down warriors to fight in the spirit realm. And from Maha Naim, the illegitimate king David saw the illegitimate usurper Absalom dealt with. Please don't try to read too much into that politically. Let me just say this. God is going to deal with corruption. God is going to deal with the hidden things. God is going to deal with the things that are illegitimate. But can we let him define the who and the what and the how of it? Because I think all of us are going to be a little surprised at some things that are going to happen. Is that okay? Is that okay that for the God that sees everything? to get in there and to deal with the Absalom spirit that's tried to take over in this nation. Amen? And so we're going to advance. Guys, this is not a time to draw back. Do you feel encouraged? I want you to feel encouraged. I want you to feel engaged. I'm going to ask Pastor Greg come, to come. I'm preaching his message, actually, because he got this word. But <laughs> We're going to advance. That's the word of the Lord, is it not? It's actually this word advance came over a year ago. And I want to show you something about advance. All right, everybody's on your feet. Yep. I want you to take a step forward. Then take another step forward. You are advancing. Keep taking steps forward. Keep coming. Keep coming. Come on, keep coming. Walk it. No, don't, don't change your direction. You, you don't know this dance. No, go back to where you were. You moved out of the rank. Go back. We're going to learn something. The Lord said this morning we have to learn to walk in stride with him. That's by the Spirit. I didn't ask you to move to the left or the right. I said just advance straight. Okay, so take a step straight and keep walking until you hit something. You're going to hit something. See, advancing isn't just moving. Advancing is overcoming what comes in front of you. It's the obstacles that you come into. That's why God wants us to advance. When we come up against that wall, when we come up against that, that uh, obstacle that's in front of you, now God is going to join with you and move what needs to be moved. You see, you came up against something that stopped you in your track. What are you going to do? Normally, we just stop and we say, we can't advance. There's something in the way. Jericho could have looked at the wall and said, we can't advance. The wall is so big. God said, shout a shout. I'm going to join with your shout and bring the wall down. It is time to advance when we come up to obstacles. Those are why we're advancing. Those are the things that need to come down. We got to know by the Spirit. The, um, the man of God brought a word this morning that every one of us have a sword in our hand. Our sword is his sword. Our shield is his shield. We're dressed in his armor. And it's time to overcome and advance. So as we sing, and we, we're going to pray, but as we sing, I want, I want you to advance. We can't stop. You can't look at what's going on in the world. you got to look at him. So just lift your hands up, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're releasing now an anointing upon your church for advancement. 
advancement at every stage. Nothing's holding us back. We're not looking back. We're not going back. We are going forward into the, the things of God, into the decree of God, into what you are bringing out of heaven. We are decreeing from heaven here on earth. So I say over the church right now, there is an anointing being placed upon you. There is a mantle being placed upon you that nothing's going to hold you back, but you are going to advance the kingdom of God. You are advancing his will, his desires in the earth in this present day like never before. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call on me and I will answer you. As you read on in that scripture, it says, I will do what no man has ever seen. We are at that threshold where God is going to do what no man has ever seen before. He is going, that you read on, it says, I will bring an abundance of peace and truth in this present day. We declare it, we hear it, we decree it here on earth, Lord, and we advance this in Jesus' name. Awesome. Can we do this as well? Just put your hand on your heart. I want you to just come in agreement. Lord, as I heard the word, even as we were entering into this pandemic and all that was taking place, that we were not just battling a natural virus, but there was a virus that wanted to be infected into the church to cause us to be weak, to cause us not to breathe, to cause us not to do what we were called to do. And so, Father, you said it was fear, fatigue and fatalism and so I pray for the church now those on Vision Nation those around the world that may be watching those here today I decree over you every spirit of fear that wants to lay siege against you you shall be victorious faith shall arise and you shall receive the joy of the Lord and you shall receive the breath of the Almighty and you shall be able to war the way that you are made for and called to fight and so I loose right now that which will break each person free from the spirit of fear that we will not live intimidated we will not live in fear of tomorrow or what else may take place we decree our faith is secure in an unshakable hope that comes from heaven itself and we lay claim to that now and father I speak against fatigue and every assignment of weariness everything that wants to wear us down so it can take us down we say no to you you in the name of Jesus the joy of the Lord is my strength I shall receive the breath of God I shall receive that which gives me the capacity to run and not be weary to walk and not faint and rise up like the eagles do upon the wind and soar in the storm or soar in the clear sky father we know how to operate no matter what is taking place grace is there for me I can do all things because Christ will strengthen me in every season and we loose the breaking off of fatalistic thinking that wants to put, put us in a place of passivity we say no we are the church the ecclesia we're made for this time we rise up to speak your word and to declare your truth and to make you known in every way and let your kingdom come let your will be done let those things that you've decreed come to pass and so we pray and we stay in faith and we are the army part of the Naha Mahi that are moving in as one of the armies and engaging with angel armies to accomplish your mission and purpose in the earth and as we sing this song as we close this morning that says the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you it's a song of covenant and if you remember as Jacob was wrestling there was something in his heart that he decreed and he said this I'm not gonna stop wrestling with God I'm not gonna stop reaching out and grabbing who you are and all your promises I'm not gonna stop until you bless me so as this song is being sung and we're releasing it to you as heaven is releasing it to you lay claim contend say I am gonna receive that blessing no matter what it takes just open your hearts your hands if you want and receive this as a decree right now in Jesus name the Lord bless you and keep you, make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Oh.
the Lord turned his face toward you favor. and give you peace. Amen. 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 I mean, so be it unto me and my family. Your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you a thousand generations and your family and your children and your children and your children may his favor be upon you for a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going and your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you He's for you. 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 goodness we're thankful for your blessing we're thankful for your grace thank you for coming today listen this is what the people of God do they praise in every season they lift up the name of the Lord and declare his name to be great and God supplies everything that we have need of if you'd like further prayer you're welcome to come down the teens will be happy to pray for you further we bless you in the name of the lord and thank you for warming up the house of god today with your praise thank you guys we bless you we bless everybody on vision nation as well thank you for being here today